Hi guys, my name is Yannick Reis. I hope you're doing well and I welcome you to a new video. The so-called event bus design pattern is a well-known architecture pattern used in many apps. With the introduction of hot flows in Kotlin, it has never been easier to implement this design pattern. But what is this design pattern even about? Why could it be useful for us? And what is the difference to a regular observer or a published subscriber pattern? Let's take a look at this very simplified overview of this design pattern. In general, we have three main parts of this pattern. The event itself, the event bus, and of course, the subscribers or interactors. As you can see, it's an unidirectional flow. From the top, the publisher pushes an event to the event bus and the event bus notifies all the interested subscribers. The benefits of this pattern are that you have a very loose coupled architecture and it's at the same time asynchronous and also anonymous because the subscriber don't know about the actual publisher and also the publisher don't know who is registered to this event bus. So the only thing the publisher is interested in is in publishing his event. The subscriber on the other hand is only interested in receiving those events. None of these participants is interested about the other participants on the other side. So this pattern is really only useful if none of the interactors or subscribers and publishers really need to know about each other. If you're familiar with the observer pattern, you may ask yourself what's the actual difference between these two patterns. The main difference is that in the event bus pattern, you subscribe to a specific topic, but not to the source of the topic like you would do it in the regular observer pattern. The observer pattern fits the most if you really want to notify specific objects about a state change of another object and is more bound to a specific scope of your application. The event pass pattern, however, is more likely to be used if you need to notify some subscribers application-wide about a specific topic. But enough of the theoretical part. Let's dive into the code and see how we can implement such an event bus pattern with Kotlin and shared flows. We will take the example of publishing a so-called app event that could maybe be an event like the user has logged out and various areas of the app need to execute some code like deleting some user data or updating the UI. I'm here in the basic activity material three project and now I just create a new package and call it event bus. First thing is an enum and we will call it app event. And as I initially said, let's think about a logout event. Of course, there could be more events like login or any other stuff. And now we also need a controller and we will call this controller event bus controller and this controller will now receive a hot flow which is a shared flow and this shared flow will be called the event bus and will be of the type app event and of course we also need to implement it now we want to allow other components to call an event here and let's say publish event and this is an app event. So to publish an event with the shared flow, we need to be in a suspendable context. So this function will be a suspend function. And then we can say event bus emit and here we just emit the new event. The behavior of the shared flow in its initial configuration, if we step into the documentation, is that the replay value here is of zero. This means that initially, if a new subscriber subscribed to the chat flow and a previous event uh, was sent to the chat flow or got emitted, the new subscriber won't receive this event. So if you want to adapt this behavior, you could set this value to any other value. So let's step back into the event bus controller. In a real world case, you would use a dependency injection framework to instantiate this class and pass it to various view models or whatever you wherever you need this class. 
However, in this case, we have no dependency injection framework. That's why we need to implement the singleton pattern by ourselves. And we can simply do that by converting the class to an object. And now we automatically have a single instance of this event bus controller um, as soon as we access it. And we can ignore this warning here. It's just about the naming for now. And next, let's see how we can actually interact with this event bus controller. So the first thing is that we will declare or create a new um, view model. And here we say uh, view model. And then let's think about our use case. The user clicks a button and logs out. So we say log out. And in this case, we want to notify all the interested subscribers about this event. So as we saw, because we need, um, because, because it's a suspend function where we publish our app event, we start a new coroutine here. And then we can simply access our event bus controller and say publish event. And here we use the only app event we have, the logout event. Of course, we not only want to publish the event, we also want to collect the event. Or to be more specific, we also want to see how the subscriber interacts with this event bus controller or with this chat flow. So let's take the, let's say, main activity here as an example. Remember, it's still the um, template for the material three activity sample. And let's say in the on create, let's create a function that collects only our logout events because as we said, there potentially could be also more than just logout app event. So let's say collect logout event and create a new function. Then we use the uh, lifecycle scope and launch a new coroutine. And inside this um, new coroutine, we call the repeat on lifecycle API and we can say lifecycle state and say we repeat on the lifecycle state started. And inside this block, we can safely access the event bus controller, event bus, so our shared flow. And then we don't directly collect our app events because we only are interested in the logout event. So we first use the filter and then we say app event, which could potentially be any app event. And then we check for app event logout. And afterward, we can say collect latest. And now we have our logout event and yeah, can do whatever we want with this event. But that is out of scope of this function here. And nothing more to do at this point. That's the part for collecting it. Of course, you can also collect it on other uh, layers of your architecture, not only on the UI layer, but that's how you can handle this. And, and if we quickly recall our simple graphic here, we now have the publisher, which is in our case, the example view model. We have the event bus, which is our event bus controller, the object we declared. And we also have our subscribers. In our case, that's only the main activity. But potentially, there could be many more subscribers. And each of these could handle the event however they like. To sum up, in this video, we talked about the event bus pattern, how it compares to the observable pattern and also how to implement it with Kotlin. Some may argue that this pattern is a little bit verbose because you have a single point of failure. And also if you as a developer come into a new project, it's not always that clear who interacts with this event bus because it's so loosely coupled and can potentially be very hard to understand. So also if you have many app events, this event bus can quickly get very messy and you should really only use it for lightweight parts of your app. One example besides the logout use case could for example also be um, connectivity state changes, 
where some UI parts of your app need to update and you maybe want to save some state or something like that. And with that, we're already at the end of the video. I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.